get this done. Questions from homework? Anybody? Everybody remember there's the practice quizzes up on Canvas, the solutions video is up there. Why is all that important? When is this quiz? Tomorrow. 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 All right. So, you know, that's why it's important. So you can get the practice quiz. You can look at the solutions video. Okay. Anything from homework? I can make the quiz tonight. No, I moved it a while back. So again, uh, if you haven't seen, the homework timeline sheet has been updated again. Um, hopefully this is the last time I have to update it, but who knows? Down here, we have a quiz that I need to determine when that's gonna be. Uh, so this is pushed back to tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Uh, I have a question from nine four, and it's in regards to a section, so it doesn't really matter which one. Oh, cool. Um, but it's like twenty through through twenty six on section nine four. Can you see it? Yep. Looks okay. Good. So these guys. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Exactly. All right. So right now it's a product of two trig functions, right? So this is the thing about sum to product and product to sum. So it's kind of gross trying to go through this. You can have your uh, green sheet sitting next to you. So let's see, I can't remember where they put here. Look at this. This section here looks like it'll help, right? And just to show you, let's see the green sheet. Oh, where are your green sheets? I mean, I have the green sheet up on my other screen. The uh, okay. So here, let me look at it too. Hold on. Shaisa. The trig laws. The screen jumps around. Okay. So I think it should be down below the black line because I would never make you memorize this business because I don't have this business memorized. So this is much better than trying to flip back and forth through the book. So here's your uh, yeah, how to rewrite a product as a sum. Cool. And then when it says leave in terms of sine and cosine, it's just that I like leave it in that basic form. Yeah, you don't have to get it down to a number answer. It sounds like, let me see what it says. Leave in terms, of, oh yeah. So, I mean, that's awesome. You just have to rewrite it using the rule and you can stop. You don't have to get an answer. Yeah. Okay, that's kind of what I was unsure of. The rest of it makes sense. Thank you. <laughs> Yay. Okay. How's everybody else? Anything else? Number 36 on the same section. Oh, yeah. So this one's got a few things going on. Notice something. Okay. A couple things immediately jump out at me. But tell me, can somebody tell me one thing that kind of jumps out at you that needs to be addressed or that can be done immediately? Anybody? Octa. Yeah, okay. Okay, where? Cosine. Yeah, in here. Do you see how you can factor a cosine x out? And then what's left looks like an identity. And what else kind of jumps out at you in this whole thing? There's a problem with one of these things that don't look like the others. 3x. Yeah, there's a, there's one that's got an angle that's different. Everybody has an X angle, except for this guy. So you could kind of work on both sides on this thing, because this this has nothing but angles that are X. This guy's got a 3X angle. You can work on both. I would factor the cosine out. I would rewrite cosine of 3X. I don't know. Does that get you started? Kind of, yes. Kind of? Okay. I'm wondering, I mean, what can you do with cosine of 3x? What can you do with that? What can you do with that? What do you do with a problem like cosine 3x? 
Um, no, Bo, it'll be due. I don't know. I normally make it due Friday night. If I give it to you on Thursday. All right. Um, what do you guys think? What can you do with cosine three x? Or maybe just kind of work on this until you get to a point, and that'll tell you what to do with this. Do you guys see what I'm saying? So try out what I said. Rio pointed out you can factor a cosine x out. You also have this that you're going to have to worry about eventually. But if you keep going with this side until you get to a point, maybe it'll tell you what you should do with this side. I mean, that's the nice thing. You've got one side kind of informing what should happen on the other side. I don't know if you guys see some of these problems like that. No, okay, yeah. I understand. You guys have only been doing this for, uh, like, what, a week? Less than that? And I've been doing them for... 27 years, maybe? Well, not really, for 27 years straight. My God, what a life. That's all I do. Sit around proving trig identities. Anything else, guys? Everything else is good? Okay. Oh, I had a question. Sorry. Yes. I, I sent it in the chat. I didn't know if you were looking at it. Oh, um, uh, oh no. Send it just... right now because I just looked at the chat. <laughs> Just 33 and 95. 9.5, okay. Oh, this is interesting. I was just talking to somebody else about this. Where are you stuck with this problem? Whoa, hello. So it's, it's a difference formula. Okay. Which Not, would be... Well, is oh, I see. What, are you thinking about? A th are you thinking far ahead? So it's. What do you mean? It's a difference formula. How how are you saying that? Like, isn't that formula the same thing as saying sine three of x minus six x? Good. Okay. Good. Um, that's as far as I got. Because <laughs> so oh. from there, I was like, what do I do with the three x? Right, I'm going to assume you did this because that's what that is, right? Yeah. And what sign of negative angle? What sign of negative theta? Uh, also negative. Well, it becomes negative, yeah. So sine theta, so that you can rewrite this as negative sine of three x. So the negatives cancel. Do you see that? We ha, we ha. Oh yeah. All right. Um, but it says an exact value, and it's a decimal. No, solve with the method shown in the section. Oh, okay, okay. All right. So this maybe goes back to what you know, what we were talking about. Um, so how do you solve this? Would you take that inverse sign? Yep. Now... I need you guys to really understand this. The reason I showed you the, remember the plus or minus thing? Mm -hmm. What could I do this right now? Plus or minus what? Uh, you can, wait. <laughs> what are you... Anybody? Oh, two pi. Oh, that's right. <laughs> the formula thing that we talked about. Because of the fact that I can go any number of uh, any multiple of two pi around and just get the same angle again. So of course, technically that's an infinite number of answers, but we kind of know it's the same place in the fricking circle, right? Do you not need a. Uh, we will oh, in a second. I just okay. want to make sure everybody's cool with uh now of course we haven't solved for x yet, right? So that's the next thing to take care of. Divide by three. Yeah. And then you have to figure out you can't just add as many of these as you want to, because you're supposed to stay between zero and two pi. Yeah. All right. So I mean I'm gonna leave something for you to think about. So that's that's what I'm gonna leave for you to think about is.
If you put a zero in, you get this answer. If you put a one in, you add two pi over three to this. And, and you know, cause it really shouldn't be a minus option cause I gotta go from zero to two pi. Is that cool? I don't know, maybe. You can throw this in the calculator and see what this is. I mean, I really want everybody, so what am I gonna do? K equals zero. I'm gonna get inverse sine of 0.9 divided by three. Is everybody cool with that? If I make K equal to zero, don't I just get this? Yes, yes, yes. What if I get K equal one? See what it is. Plug it in the calculator. What's the biggest, uh, uh, where do I have to start throwing them out? Where do I have to start throwing answers out, considering I'm supposed to be on this interval? If I get an answer that is, what can I not have as an answer? Something that is greater than two pi. Greater than two pi. So if you just throw in one, two, three for K and just see when does it become bigger than two pi, that's where I can stop. Does that make sense? Because I'm only supposed to give the answers from zero to two pi. So I can just check and see which answers, which values of K can I go up to to give me something that's less than two pi still. Do you guys agree with me? If K is three, what happens if K is three? What am I adding here? Exactly two pi. Exactly two pi. And that's obviously gonna be too much. Because this is positive plus two pi is too big. So I know k can't be three or more because that's too much. So now the question is, is two okay? So throw a two in and see if it comes out to be, what is two pi roughly? So can somebody give me an estimate of two pi? 3.14. That's pi, what's two pi? Twice that, yeah. six point something. Yeah, twice three and twice 14. So as long as your answer is less than this, then it's an allowable answer for this question. So what I'm saying is, throw this in your calculator, letting K be zero, well, that's probably fine, that'll be this. Let K be one, let K be two. I already know that k equal three is too much. Why is k equal to three too much? Because then I'm adding two pi to a number that's greater than zero. That's obviously going to be more than two pi. I don't even have to put it in the calculator. I know k equal three is too much. What about k equal two? Put a two there. Throw all this mess in the calculator and see if it's how it relates to 6.28. Now, if you're wondering why are we using a calculator and a problem that says, give me the exact answers. Well, the answers I write down are gonna have inverse sign bullshit in them. I am gonna give the exact answers. I'm gonna check them in the fricking calculator, right? Cause I don't know what the shit this is. I'm sorry, there's a little person out there. I'm sorry, <laughs> hopefully the little person is not around. When you have little people, please mute me. All right, I'm a horrible person, bad influence, all right. Is that better for that problem? I mean, that problem is not supposed to be immediately obvious because it's a gross output. Okay, maybe. Anything else, guys? Anything else from homework? So how would you write the answer, just that equation, but only like the three different ways? So one answer is definitely this. This is an answer. Yes. Another answer might be this. Times one or two. Plus two pi over three. And then another answer might be plus four pi over three, letting K be two. Okay. But I, guess I just got to plug them in the calculator and make sure they're not bigger than 6.28. Yeah. That'll make sure that they stay within that interval. Okay. Was that an immediately obvious thing that you had to do? No. 
Could that be why Jeff wants you to ask questions on homework problems? Because they get weird sometimes? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yep. They get weird sometimes. So don't feel like you shouldn't ask because you're like, I should know this. What? No, some of these are weird. Jeez. All right. Okay. All right. Nothing else. Anything else? Okay. All right. I'm going to stop sharing. I have, I have oh. a, yes. The same quiz. Uh, same problem. Like thirty-three. Yes. Is there um, co-terminal? No. Uh, the other side. You know what I mean. No. <laughs> So sine inverse of 0.9 over 3 is uh, quadrant 1, right? So is there, is there a... <laughs> yeah, sine, this is quadrant 1. Yeah. Because like you and I were talking about earlier, sine inverse of one is pi over two. So sine inverse of 0.9 is definitely in quadrant one. So is there- and When you divide it by three, it's even more in quadrant one. Yeah, but uh, I'm talking about, so you have the same, how do you call it? On the other side, the quadrant two, do you? The the problem here is all the spacing is messed up by the division by three. I think I know what you're trying to do. You use some reference angles and stuff, maybe? Yeah. Um, but the problem is I don't know exactly where this really is, to be honest, because I don't know what the inverse of sine of 0.9 is exactly. So I, I know I'm going to add 2 pi over 3 to this, right? So it could possibly help you get a feel for what the biggest value of K is. Is that what you're trying to do? But you can know by subtract like pi minus uh, this, the like sine inverse of 0.9 over three. So you get the uh, uh, reference angle. For How do you know that when you add two pi over three to this, you're you're in the second quadrant. Hmm. Not sure. Okay. So I, I kind of like what you're trying to do, but it, there's a few too many unknowns here to really be able to force it to work like a problem where we know more, right? Like, like if this was a number that we knew, like one half or something, you know, so we could actually tell what the value was and we would know exactly where the quadrant was for the reference angle. It, it doesn't quite work that well because there's so many, I don't know what the value of the angle is where I'm starting. So I don't know where I'm going to end up when I add this much to it. Yeah, I could maybe estimate some stuff, but I don't know. Oh, I mean, like, you have like two values for for example like sine inverse of like one half you have like a pi over six and a pi pi over six then you have like two different answers so can you do the same thing for this <sighs> i think that let me think for this specific one, I think it probably is going to work out like that. Uh, let's see. You can technically know. It, it, it uh, yeah, it pretty much needs to. Well, not necessarily. It's because the period is getting all screwed up by the three. So it doesn't have to necessarily follow the same structure as what it does before the period is messed up. So, all right, all right. This is getting a little too deep because I was going to talk about you can actually squeeze the quadrants together 
instead of looking at it as a period change, that's going to get way too weird for us right now. So we're not going to go there. Because uh, I, I did a number 21 in the same chapter, 9.5. It's kind of same. like the other yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. I had a, a like I said, sign inverse of one one half. Sure. Over time. And that's an angle that we know. Oh, so, so you know. if we know the angle, we can do both. We'll know what the reference angle should be and where it should be for sure because we'll know what the actual angle is mm. uh, so it's not yeah there's the i don't know all right i i there's something in what you're saying rio it's just a little too much for me to go into right now okay i really don't want to take us in that direction at the moment because we don't need to go there but there is something in what you're saying I don't know if you understand me, but it almost doesn't matter because I got to stop talking about that right now. I don't want to get too freaky more than we have to be. I think people think we're probably freaky enough already, but there is something to what you're saying. Okay. It's not quite as easy as what you're saying, but there is something there. Um, anything else from homework stuff that I can answer like half of? We all okay we all done with homework questions is that it you guys okay all right so what we need to do is we need to do some examples of law of cosines um so i'm just going to pull some out of the book just to keep myself straight here yeah we'll do uh we'll do the two main um types yes i like it Ooh, there's some other stuff in here too i like it let me see how much you want to talk about that i don't know Okay, cool. It's just that. I like it. So let's remember what law of cosines is first. I know I'll turn off my background here in a minute. Pull this over here. Yeah, I'm gonna clean the trees a little bit. And the mountain in the background. Oh my God, there we go. Okay, it takes forever. Yeah. All right, so just to remind you guys, we have, there's several different ways to write the law of cosines. They're all basically the same thing because, so the main way I think of is this way, because so far I've written Pythagorean theorem, right? So watch this, minus two AB cosine C. So what if it was this? Can you guys figure out what goes here if they're actually in this order? If it was side A instead of side C that I need over here, what would go here? Minus two BC. BC, good. A B A B B C B C. Um, cosine. Cosine A. A. All right. Once you see the form, so there's there's three versions and they're all the same to be honest, because A B C is just dummy variables. It really doesn't matter which side we call A B or C, especially when it's not a right triangle, right? It gives a shit then. So that's basically why we say there's three when they're really all the same. So the last one should not be a surprise. Okay, that's amazing. So what if, let's do, let's do one that's kind of neat. Let's see. Let's do something neat for a change. All right. Uh, let's see if I can make a triangle that makes sense. It almost looks like a right triangle. Okay, I could do this. Yeah. 
There we go. <laughs> Three, four, six. I like it. Three, four, six. Is that a right triangle? No, not really. Yeah. Three squared plus four squared is not equal to six squared. So it's not a right triangle. So I cannot use uh, trigonometry directly to figure out what the angles are. Uh, what do you guys, what I normally like to do is I like to call the largest side C if there's an option, just because that's what we're used to, right? Doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna call this one B, I'm gonna call this one A just because. So that makes this angle C, that makes this angle B, that makes this angle A. You definitely want to identify the angles with symbols to keep it straight with the shit you're finding when you do this. All right, so officially, which version can I use to figure something out? Is there any version that I have to use? No. No, there isn't. I can use any of them. So I know all the sides. I don't know any angles. So for one thing, can somebody tell me why could I not use law of signs for this? Why could I not use law of signs? Need an angle. Why? Because you need a, a set of both like I'm going there. Yeah, you need to make a complete ratio, right? All right, I like it. Yeah, some of you guys look really laggy, or is it me? Do I look okay to people? It might just be me. My connection doesn't seem great at the moment. All right. Yeah, you and Jordan. All right, okay, okay, okay. So I don't care. Let's do the first one. So what do we got? um you guys do it i'm just gonna stay in here i'm tired this is nothing this is not this is nothing this is nothing you know c you know a you know b can you solve for the angle c go So let's see, we get 36 minus 25, we get 11 equals negative 24. So I get cosine C equals negative 11 over 24. So I get C equals inverse cosine of negative 11 over 24. Okay, is everybody with me on that? Sorry. You guys see that? Nothing major, nothing amazing. Then I'm going to ask you why this answer makes sense. Why is that 11? I don't know. Uh, 36. 9 and 16 is 25, so 36 minus 25. And that's why it's 11. 
Understood. All right. And then what do you guys get when you throw that in the calculator? Anybody get what angle C is? Under 17. Yeah, 117.28. 17.28. 17 yeah. Let me ask you real quick. This would be three, four, what? If that was a right angle. If C was a right angle, this would be three, four, what? Five. Five. Everybody with me? Three, four, five triangle. That is a little bigger than five, so that angle should be a little bigger than 90. Bam. Bam. It's supposed to be an exclamation. I had to change it to a question mark. Okay. And, and guess what I'm going to do to figure out A or B? It doesn't matter. I'm going to do basically the exact same stuff, aren't I? Just in a different order because now, and now you see why we write this three different ways. So I'm going to take this away. Is that all right? It's going to go away. So now, for example, if I want to figure out angle A, I can use this formulation. Why? All right, there you go, Jeff. There's a pretty good question in the chat that just popped okay. up. Uh, once you got an angle, can you swap to the law of sines? Oh, yeah, you could. Why would I not do that? Because inverse sine leaves the option for a reference angle. And the weird thing is, when you bring inverse, when you bring in like inverse sine to a middle of a problem like this, you could the answer could actually be the bigger angle, not the angle you get when you do inverse sine. It could actually be the bigger angle. I mean, so you could do it. You could totally do it. You just have to have a feel for what to expect. Law of cosines will never have a situation where there could be two answers. Law of cos. Let me say this again. Law of cosines, if I'm using law of cosines from the beginning, I cannot get two answers. It's only the law of sines. So how is this an, a, a, an example of cosine being an asshole? Well, cosine said, give sine the shit stuff. Give sine the, the bad ain't triangle with two answers. And like, oh, see, cosine's still an asshole. I, I know, it's a reach. Um, is that all right? So you can, you can. There are things you need to be careful about if you do that, because inverse sine has issues. And I really want you to understand this. Inverse cosine, what's the range of inverse cosine? Does anyone remember? Minus pi over two. No, that's inverse sine. Inverse sine is negative pi over two to pi over two. Here's sine, and we had to cut it here and here to make it one to one. Here's cosine, and we had to cut it here and here to make it one to one. So inverse cosine's range will be zero to pi, zero to pi. <laughs> so when you do inverse cosine to find angles in a triangle, it can it will never be a reference angle. It will always give you exactly because it goes from zero to one eighty. It covers the whole range of what's possible in a triangle. So why does law of sines give me an option where there's two triangles possible? Because it goes from negative pi over two to pi over two. They could be reference angle answers. Do you guys get that? Do you guys get that? Okay. Maybe, maybe. So. I really want you all to understand. Tell me you understand. You can go to law of signs. There are just many things you have to be careful about. So maybe I'll do this problem like this, and then we'll do it again with law of signs. I'll tell you, well, all right, let's do this. All right, let's do this. Let's figure out this. Uh, and then I'll show you something related to law of signs. Um, all right, so now I'm going to throw stuff in. Uh, four squared and six squared. Jeff, throw stuff in. 
four, six, cosine A. So this will be uh, 16 plus 36 is 52. Nine minus 52 is negative 41. Is that what that is? And this will be negative 48. So I'll divide by negative 48. I have no idea if you guys are with me. I bam, subtract, divide, just get there, right? Just get there. Hello, hello. You guys all right? It's not hard math, right? It's not hard. Hopefully I did that correctly in my head. I don't know. So then I need the inverse cosine of 41 over 48. So what do we get for angle A? Oh shit, Jeff. Anybody? Did I do that too quickly? Are you guys okay with that? There's nothing major happening there. Did I do it correctly? 16.3. 31.33 I get. Uh, that's what I have as well. Yeah, 31.33 degrees. Now, do I have to do law of cosines to get the last angle? Or do I use law of sines to get the last angle? You don't need to. You can just subtract, right, from yeah, 180. Yeah, 180. Screw it, man. I know, they, all right, it's right. I know they have to make 180. So once I get two angles, I don't have to do anything special for the last one. I just see how much is left for the last dude. So add these together, subtract from 180. Um, 51.64, so it's going to be 28.36. Wait, sorry, is it? isn't 9 minus 16 plus 36 negative 43? Uh, 16 plus 36 is 52. Oh, yeah, it's 43. Thank you. So that's why I got 26.38. Thank you. Well, then, yeah, call me out. All right. So then it was what, 36? 26 plus 3, or 0.38. 43. All right, 26.38. All right, shoot. Now that's going to, now what's left over for this guy? 43.66. So it's going to be 36.34. I don't trust my brain now. Yes. All right. I can handle that, but I can't handle. 9 minus 52 at all. 36 point. I already forgot what I said. 3, 4. Okay, now watch. Uh, here's the trick. Um, we did that problem. No problem, right? We're done. Yay. Now, let me just show you one thing in case anybody is curious about going to law of science. Let's pretend like, let's pretend like we solved for angle A. We only have angle A, let's say, right? And then you want to use law of sines. So now I know that A is 26.38. So what can I do for law of sines? What's the ratio I can set up completely? Sine of 26.38 over 3. And then I can do either one. So let's do C, let's say sine of C over six. All right, solve that for C. Solve up the sire. No, Jeff. There we go. That's better. Okay. What do you guys get for that? Anybody? So if you multiply six up, then you take the inverse sign 
This is what you're going to plug in the calculator, right? So has anybody got that yet? Uh, 62 points. Yeah, 62.7. Is that right? Is that what it's supposed to be? Do you see what I'm saying? But you know that's not right because this should be the largest angle in this triangle because it's across from the biggest side. So you would have to realize that you should do 180 minus this. And of course, what's 180 minus 62.7? 117. Freaking this, right? Which is the right answer. So law of cosines does not allow for that kind of thing to happen because it got the zero to pi option for the range. It covers all the angles in a triangle. It's never going to be a reference angle answer for the triangle. Okay. Now listen to me, that doesn't mean inverse cosine never gives you a reference angle. It totally will, just not for a triangle, because a triangle can only go from zero to 180, which matches perfectly with what inverse cosine does. So in this case, if the C is unknown, like X, it can be both, either one. What do you mean? No, 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 it definitely cannot be this. That is not what it, it cannot be that. I mean, if you don't know the length of psi, let's see. Well, now you're talking about a different problem because <laughs> this problem, I know the length of all the sides. So sure, if you want to change the problem, then it becomes who knows what, right? Does that make sense? So uh, in this case, since I know all the side lengths, that's got to be the big angle. That cannot be the answer. Okay. Yeah, I'm just checking. Sure, sure, sure. So I would highly recommend the less com comfortable you are, the more you stay with law of cosines through a whole problem instead of switching to sines. Now, one little thing, if you always do the angle that's biggest first, then that's not gonna happen, or at least it's gonna happen a lot less often, right? That's why I picked this one for us to know. And that's why I do this one first, probably. I just automatically do that one first because that's probably in the back of my brain, right? Whoa, now I am definitely lagging, am I? I was still moving when I stopped moving. That's freaky to me. Okay, anyway. All right, I'm gonna erase all this. Law of cosines is normally easier to digest because it's more straightforward, right? Law of sines has that one situation where you have to check and it's a little bit amorphous and you're like, I don't know what I'm looking for. Oh my God. All right, let me erase this down here. We'll do another situation. I think we did one like this last time, but we'll do this again. Let's see. Let's say, sure, we got five, nine, and we don't know this. And I'll say this is, uh, what do you want it to be, Jeff? I don't know, man. We'll make it 41 degrees. Now, again, would law of signs work on this from the beginning? Could I set up a law of signs right now? Can you think about it? Can you? No, you cannot. Why can I not set up a law of signs? What do I need in order for signs to work is a complete angle inside pair. I have to be able to set up a complete ratio. Side of an angle to its side. Do I have an angle and its side anywhere? Hello, you guys okay out there? I'm trying to show you so that you don't, one way to do this is to go, this is side angle side, and I've memorized that side angle side is law of cosine. That's bullshit. That is so much bullshit. Why memorize shit when you don't need to? When is it law of signs? If I have a complete ratio I can set up, when is it not when I don't? Bam! So much less to memorize. 
But if you want to, you can memorize ASS and SAS and SSS and all that kind of shit. Okay. Feel like you're doing some Morse code. I don't know. So let's label some stuff. What do you guys want to call this? Uh, let's give stuff A, B, and C. Let's see. What's this side? What do you want to call this side? A. A. Okay. What about this side? C. C. I love it. So this is B. This is angle B. This is angle A. This is angle C. All right. If you don't do that, I don't understand you because otherwise you're not going to keep it straight what your answers and where they go. Now, in this case, there is one formulation I can use. There's only one. Can somebody else figure out for me which formulation I can use? I don't know all three sides, so I have to use the one that's got the angle I know. Does that make sense? Yeah, I have to use the third one because it's got the angle that I know. I know ang I know side A, I know side C, I know angle B, so can't I solve for side B? Yes. Maybe? No? Can I just throw shit in there? I don't know what B is. Let's see, A is five. C is nine, five times nine times two. Is that all right? And I always get at least seven people that forget order of operations. Don't fricking do 81 minus 90, please. Please, you guys with me out there? Don't do 81 minus 90, please. You can't subtract before you multiply. Okay, so we want to uh, add these together. Oh, what did I forget to put in there? <laughs> what is B? 41. Okay, that's better. So you get 106 uh, minus, and then I'll just throw all this shit in the calculator right now. Just throw all this shit in the calculator. You can even throw it in the square root, right? Bam! Just throw all that shit in the calculator. Why didn't I put plus or minus? When I took a square root, why didn't I put plus or minus? It can't be minus. Yeah, it can be negative. It's a freaking side length of a triangle, so it can't be negative. So of course I'm not gonna put that down there. All right, so tell me when you get an answer. Six point two. Yeah, let's say 6.17. All right. Now, this is another situation. We're sort of like in the same place we were. I've got all three sides and one angle. Could I use law of signs now? Yes. Is there something I have to be careful about that could trick me? Yes. <laughs> right? So it's totally up to you. Law of science is fine. You just have to be careful about, can you tell if the answer makes sense or if you should use the reference, what it's a reference angle for? Does that make sense? If you don't think you can, or if you don't wanna bother with it, right? It, I, I'm not even saying you don't think you could. You just don't wanna bother with it. Just use law of cosines again. Maybe, maybe. Because can you tell right now which side well, now you can tell which angle should be the biggest, right? You probably could tell before, but this angle should definitely be the biggest. Okay, so you could kind of do law of signs and be careful about it and, and so forth, but uh, let's try to use law of cosines again. Uh, let's get angle C, why not? Which means I want to use this first one so I can get angle C. So now I've got nine squared equals five squared plus, uh, oh shit, what did I just do? <laughs> what was this six point? Dad gum it, Jeff, really? Six point one seven plus 6.17 squared minus twice five times 6.17 times 
cosine C. And it should feel a little better, I would think. This is so, I mean, just throw stuff in the right place and then do it, right? So we get, let's see, it's going to be a bunch of calculator madness. All right, so I'll tell you what I get. Right, well, actually, wait a minute. let me see if anybody gets it. Let's see if we get the same answer. Now, the one little thing here is this is a rounded number that will actually throw our calculations off a little bit. The less you round this, the more accurate the angle C will come out. But, you know, we're doing all this by hand, basically. I mean, I know we're throwing a calculator, but still. Anybody get that yet? No? Right, 81 minus 25 minus 6.17 squared divided by 10 times this is 61.7 negative inverse cosine. So that's what you throw in your calculator. Right, did anybody get that? Anybody? Nobody? I'll tell you, I'll tell you, it's a hundred and something. Just in case you get it and you're not sure about it. Hundred six. Almost. And then of course, to get angle A is easy, right? Just add this in and see how much is left over for A. That'll be 32.11, I think. So let's see if this makes sense. Biggest angle, biggest side across. Smallest angle, smallest side across. Middle angle, middle side across. Yay. So on that level, it makes sense. Okay. Obviously, if you get a negative side length, bad. If you get a negative angle, bad. <laughs> right? That should be kind of obvious. All right, let me think. Yes, okay. Uh, what time we got? Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, so it seems to be... Oh, what's up? Hello? I think she got dropped, but I think she was saying you put negative six, 61.7 instead of 6.17. Oh, because 10, 10 times this. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I can erase this. So do you guys understand that Pythagorean theorem, you've known it forever, correct? Can you remember a time when you didn't know Pythagorean theorem? Maybe you can, maybe you can. But what have we learned over the last couple of days 
we've learned the full Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem you use is for one special case, a right triangle. And now you know the one that works for all triangles. I mean, that's kind of cool. That's kind of amazing. I don't know. Right. It's kind of like going to college and then learning the real history of America, for example, instead of the propagandized history that we learn. I don't know, has it gotten any better in grade school? I have no idea. All right. So let's talk about something interesting. Um, we're obviously going to go deeper into this topic, but I want to lay it out there a little bit. How do I find a point on a plane? How do I identify a point? What do you do? That's not a, that's not a true question. Nothing. How would I identify uh, a point? So this point right uh, there, I, uh, it's X and Y. Yeah. How far I've got to go over and how far I've got to go up, right? Or back and down or whatever. Correct. So it's, it's based on X and Y motion, which makes sense because it's on an X, Y plane. It's, a, it's called a rectangular coordinate system because I can create rectangles very easily, right? On a rectangular coordinate system. Okay, so this coordinate system works really well with things that are that have like straight lines between them. It gets funky when you get curvy shit. It doesn't get that funky with parabolas, but it gets very funky with circles and things look grosser than they have to and don't even come at me with ellipses and all this kind of stuff. All right. So what the shit does it have to do with anything? Is there another way to locate a point on a plane? There is. All right. And the other way to one other way. In fact, I need you to understand that there are like uh, six fundamental different coordinate systems and then there are like 500 variations of those coordinate systems based on specific instances for example there's something called spherical coordinate system and that obviously works if you have spherical things happening uh there's cylindrical coordinate systems uh there's oh, holy shit and then you get really freaky after that it gets exceptionally freaky okay so another way to get here what if I told somebody, somebody's standing right there, and I tell them, all right, turn until you see the point, turn by this angle, and then walk, holy shit, <laughs> you didn't turn far enough, what's your problem, turn by this angle, and then walk this far. So I could tell somebody how to get to a point by walk this far east and then walk this far north, right? Right, right. Where positive x is east, positive y is north, negative y is blah 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 blah. Or all right, turn this angle and then go this far, and then you'll get there, right? Yes, yes, yes. Both options will find every point on the plane. So they are valid coordinate system options. Is everybody sort of with me? Because the main thing for a coordinate system is just to locate a position. One way to do it is this way. It's got its limitations, like with circles and shit. Another way to do it is this, this way is gonna just eat circles for lunch. It's based on fricking circles. We could even call it the circular coordinate system, but we don't. We call it the polar coordinate system not the polar express i'm sorry if you like your tom hanks in all different ways no it's polar coordinate system so now watch this so so now watch this we'll do some very minimal stuff because we're almost out of time yeah so if i have a point let's see how do i say this yeah let's do this what if I give you, so a point in polar coordinates is R theta. Like in rectangular, it's X, Y. In polar, it's R comma theta. 
So what if I told you I had this uh, point? Let's make this interesting. Yeah, 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 sure. Two comma uh, pi over six. Which means I have to turn pi over six and then walk out two. Now, can somebody figure out how can you figure out what point that would be in rectangular coordinates? What would that point be? How would you figure out what the point is in, well, what do you need for rectangular? What two things do you need, of course? The X. Do I have a way to figure out what this X is? Uh, yes. Maybe we I can add. draw this a little bigger. Let me see. <laughs> All right. One, two, and pi over six. Okay, there we go. So can I figure out what this X is? And what this Y is? Yeah, because what would X be? We can do a cosine. Oh, let me make sure this is, so this is two, right? The radius is two. Yeah, we can do a cosine. X equals, you could do it, you could do it. It's, it's cosine of pi over six times. Times two. <laughs> remember, remember, I really want this to make sense. This is kind of like everything. And then I break it up into an X piece and I break it up into a Y piece. Well, how much goes here? This much of it goes in the X direction. This much of it. So, of course, the Y is going to be two. Sine. Sine, yes. Because sine likes Y. So, sine means the amount of the hypotenuse that lies in the Y direction. Cosine means the amount of the hypotenuse that lies in the x direction. Okay, I've never said it that directly until now, but now is definitely a time to really start looking at it like that. I've tried to get you there slowly. Now we can figure out what these are, right? What's cosine of pi over six? What's cosine of pi over six? What's cosine of pi over six? Uh, What's that? What red three over two. Red three over two, I like it, because it's near where it likes it. It likes it on the x-axis, and pi over six is close to that. So that's rad three, cool. And then sine of pi over six, of course, has got to be the other option. One half. One half. So, so one. One. So this point in rectangular coordinates, that's in polar. If I change it to rectangular, it becomes rad three comma one. So that in rectangular gets somebody to the same place as this in polar. Turn, go. So in general, if what happened, we should be able to do this. If I have R theta, if I have polar coordinate R theta, that becomes rectangular coordinate uh, R cosine theta, R sine theta. Is that cool? So I can write out even better. X equals R cosine theta, Y equals R sine theta. Something we've known forever, but we've never packaged it like this. Right? We, we know this, but we never thought about it like this exactly. Okay. All right. I like it. I like it. So I'll tell you this. A little teaser for next time. Next time, we'll talk about what if I know the XY coordinates, how do I change that into a polar set of coordinates? How do I change it? And then we'll start graphing some shit in polar coordinates. And we get some neat pictures. They look, anybody ever heard of Spirograph? It was a game I had when I was a little boy. I had gears. You can put your pencil inside of a gear that's in another gear and you make these neat spirals. We're going to find I, out mathematical equations. We're going to find out mathematical equations behind those. And the the butterfly that's up on the canvas site. Remember the butterfly on the canvas site. We're finally 
almost to the point where I can show you the equation that will make a butterfly like that on your calculator. Oh boy, is that me lagging? I have no idea. You guys, you guys with me out there? Am I going crazy? Okay. All right, that's enough. That's enough, everybody. All right, so let me know if you need to hang out. Otherwise, you're free to, to leave. We got that quiz tomorrow, so be ready. Bye, everybody. Anybody have any questions? I have a question, Professor. Yes. Yes. Uh, another one off of quiz, the quiz nine practice. All right, let's see. All right, almost there. Hold on, let's see. Quiz. There it is. So what are we looking at? Uh, letter E. I'm having trouble with like the identities and stuff. And so I was this just like, yeah, I just want to like, if you could like break it down. So does anything jump out at you in terms of i mean do you see how there's a lot of squared trig functions yes so the first thing i'm thinking about is my most basic identities the pythagorean identities because they involve squares of the trig functions right yes do you remember what one plus tangent squared is for example one plus tangent uh, secant squared do you see how that's going to do a lot of stuff here yes now look over here. If that two wasn't there, right? If that was a one, what would that be? Cosine squared plus sine squared. One. One. Now, do I have one cosine squared? No, I got two, but can't you break those up? Yes. Into cosine squared x plus cosine squared x plus sine squared x. Plus okay, sine. okay. I've given you plenty, I think, to go on. But I mean, what's more important than the specific answer to this problem is, what is it that made me look for those? It's because I saw squares running around on all these trig functions. So I start thinking about Pythagorean identities, the most basic ones, okay. and I look for those. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay, I'll mess around with that. Sweet. Thank you. You're welcome. How's everybody else? You guys all good? I'm gonna head out. Uh, I had a quick question just about uh, the polar coordinates. Yes. Um, this is, would be what you would use to graph like electromagnetism, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we like cylindrical coordinate system for that because a lot of times we talk about waveguides and stuff in, in electromagnetics. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, polar is definitely a big one for voltage waves and stuff like that. And yeah, uh, but you actually use a modified polar uh, dealing with complex numbers too, because one of the main physical uh, uses, they actually have physical meaning in electromagnetics, the, the, complex numbers. The real part is the electric field and the imaginary part is the magnetic field. So anyways, and, and they kind of tie in together. The complex plane and the polar coordinates have a beautiful tie in. So basically the answer to your question is yes. It's a modified yeah. polar coordinate system. Yeah. How do you know all that? Oh, you do stuff. You do, um, what are you working well, on? Yeah. You I, do uh, work no. down at work down at the uh, Naval Information Worker Center. Yes. So there are a bunch of scientists, but I took um, physics about two fall semesters ago. But it just, when you graph it, it looks like the uh, magnetic force right hand rule. Yeah. 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 So I was like, huh. Perfect. But, Perfect. Uh, so, yeah, there then, are uh, certain problems that are easier to work with if you change your coordinate system. Um, uh, and that's when you learn more coordinate systems, then you have more tools to attack harder and harder problems because they're really, really hard problems in an XY, XYZ, really, because now we're in three dimensions at that point. They would be really, really crazy hard in XYZ coordinate system, but I could just change over to a cylindrical or a spherical coordinate system and it becomes very simple because this coordinate system works with the way things look naturally. So it, it's, it's, it's really a huge step to start learning new coordinate systems. Yeah. 
Got it. Okay. Cool. Well, that makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. Good stuff. All right, guys. I'm going to head out. I'll see y'all.